Listen, even in war, when you are in battle, right? And we're all in a spiritual battle. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. At the first sign of an attack, the thing with the body of Christ that God showed me is, are you going to compromise with the enemy after the attack? Because you can't handle the attack. Are you going to go ahead and allow yourself, listen to me, are you going to allow yourself to compromise with the enemy because the attack seemed like it was on another level or it was powerful? Because that's what the enemy does. At the first sign of an attack to the body of Christ, and so people can't handle it. They start compromising and going back, doing the things that God asked them not to, responding in a impulsive way, right? To to um to try to lighten the blow, you know, go back to a familiar comfort where God has delivered you from. Whenever there is a, a sign of, of attack from the enemy. His plot is to get you to agree with him, to compromise with him. So now you're turning your whole back on the word that God gave you, on the stance and the posture that God has put you in. Because that, that attack was like, oh my goodness. It was hard and it can be hard. It is hard. I'm telling you, that's why he said, full, keep on the full armor of God. We have to keep on the full armor of God because I'm telling you, it's your faith that helps. When those darts, those fiery, fiery darts start coming at you, it's your faith. That shield of faith that helps that stuff bounce back off of you. But don't let your attacks make you revert, make you regress make you compromise, make you bow down, make you settle. I'm telling you, the Lord allows me to go through certain things just so I can see even deeper in the spirit. And I praise him for that. Even though I was a little mad at him, it's 222. Thank you, Father. Daniel 222, read it. It's not God's fault. He takes us through a training ground to make us even more battle ready and equipped us. You know what I'm saying? You don't know what's getting ready to get thrown at your marriage. Who's about to start speaking crazy about your kingdom spouse, your, your wife? Are you going to believe the enemy? Same thing when you marry to Jesus. The enemy wants you to, to believe him over God concerning your promises. Come on, Holy Spirit. Real talk. This is... um. This is this is this is no game. This is this is real life. This is real. The, the spiritual realm is real. And so when you're standing for something that God said is coming to you at the first line of defense, what are you gonna do when I'm <laughs> what are you gonna do when that enemy start keep throwing them them shots at you and affecting your children? Will you still stand? Will you still stand on what God said, even though the enemy is trying to intimidate you? Will you still stand if he's trying to bully you? Will you still stand strong? And this is the truth. This is the truth. This is the stuff that happens in the body of Christ. And this is what happens even with the Israelites. God blessed them. He parted the Red Sea in front of them and they forgot that quick. They started complaining, murmuring. God, they just forgot that God bought them out. And they start complaining. Complaining is coming into agreement with the enemy. Who am I talking to? This is why it kindles God's anger when we complain. Because he's always there. He's always there blessing us. It is a blessing that we are still breathing his breath when we have sinned against him and we have have not been consumed by his wrath. It is because of the love of God that we're still standing and still breathing. He doesn't want us to complain and agree with the enemy. He wants us to have a grateful heart. And I know that's hard, but it's a choice. You have to make a solid choice in the name of Jesus. When that enemy start coming in like a flood, it is God, it is Jesus. He's the one that lift up the standard. 
But are you going to allow this thing to make you do a whole 360 and start doing stuff that God has delivered you from? When you don't understand what's going on and you getting shot left and right, even in your mind, are you going to stand? Rebuke the devil and he going to flee. Real tough. But are you going to stand? Are you going to praise God anyway? This is what happens in the body of Christ. As when it's something, oh, when something happens and it's bad and you don't understand it and you get shaken, are you going to stand and believe God or are you going to agree with the enemy? That's it. Are you going to go back? Because the Israelites wanted to go back to be a slave. The Israelites wanted to go back and be abused. Totally forgot that God parted the Red Sea in front of them. This is why in the Bible it talks about us re telling us to, to remember. He wants us to remember. And sometimes we have to fight to reminisce on the good things that God has done for us and the blessings that he has done for us. We have to fight to remember his goodness. Keep on the full armor. Ephesians 3, 11 and 12 and on. Okay, keep on the full armor of God. I think Holy Spirit. Because we are going to be tested. We are always tested. And it's something, Joel was tested in, in some horrendous ways. Like I can't even imagine something happening to my, my children. But will, will you still stand? He lost everything. But will you still stand with God and believe him? Because it's ultimately God's plan. Your life is written because God has written it. Like he knew you before you were in your mother's and father's womb. So I say that to say, oh, he said marriage. Yeah, it's very important. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's very important. I've been seeing 999 a whole lot. But it's very important that um, what you believe about God, it's, 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 a, it's all aligned. What you believe about the Lord is the same thing you gonna same way you're gonna be tested with your spouse, with your God ordained spouse. Are you gonna believe the lies against them? Are you gonna agree with the enemy? Are you gonna have a bat? Ten toes deep. You understand what I'm saying? I hope you understood what I was saying. God bless y'all. I'm gonna get off here.